Hi everyone, I'm Mark Brackett. Welcome to the Dealing With Feelings Strategy of the Week. Today's strategy focuses on our mindsets about emotion regulation. And I want to thank Dr. Jenny Wang for her insights around this strategy. In a lot of cultures, or in Asian culture, or at least in my family, we love through service. We love through cooking for you. We love through telling you that you should eat more. We love through cooking or cutting fruit for you, right? These are those ways that we show we love each other. We talked a lot about her work integrating culture and family background with emotion regulation. And as Jenny pointed out, emotion regulation is inextricably linked to how we're socialized. But another way, we learn strategies and cultivate mindsets that are rooted in our cultural values. Jenny shared that she grew up witnessing a lot of suppression in her family. Given the time period and where her parents grew up, suppression was a way they learned how to deal with their emotions. There really wasn't another way. And while research shows that suppression can be unhelpful, Jenny shared how important it is to not judge the strategy. We have to ask ourselves questions like, is this strategy I'm using more or less helpful? Is it promoting well-being in my life? Or is it kind of getting in the way of my happiness? In many ways, all strategies can be unhelpful and helpful. Think about it. Taking a walk might be really great for us, but if you always take a walk when you're stressed out about something and don't actually solve the problem, then it might actually not be an effective strategy. So Jenny shared that in her culture, where touch is less prevalent, there's a lot of parallel activity that demonstrates love and supports healthy regulation. For example, cooking together or hanging with others as they do something is a common way to show love and support. She also shared how love and support in her culture is expressed by doing things for others, like making someone a meal or giving them a bowl of fruit. Now it's for you. Take a moment to think about your family background and culture. How does that play into the strategies you learned to use to regulate your emotions? Let's focus on the helpful ones today. What aspects of your family background do you appreciate? Which aspects of your culture support healthy emotion regulation? Maybe it's a religious practice. Maybe it's a family ritual. Maybe it's things that you do together at holidays. As for me, my mom made a big deal at the holidays. She invited dozens of friends and family members to our home. And gosh, I still remember those days. Take a moment to think about the ways your family background and culture support healthy regulation. If that's difficult for you, you might ask yourself, what did I learn about dealing with my feelings from my family? What about what you learned was helpful? How did what you learned promote your well-being? How often do you bring these strategies into your daily life? Have you discarded the unhelpful ones? As we become stronger emotion scientists about our emotional lives, we can learn which strategies we want to keep and which ones we want to discard. And that's a gift. Lastly, in the comments below, I'd love to know your thoughts about the role of culture and family background in emotion regulation. I'm also delighted to answer any questions you might have. My hope is that you'll take into consideration the different ways that your culture and family background support you in dealing with your feelings. 